Hello everyone, and you can tell I have lost my voice just about, so hopefully things go okay. Um, uh, Cyan, if you're watching, hello to everyone on YouTube and everyone on Facebook. Um, okay, guys, I hope you can hear me okay. I hope there's no feedback. We're just running a couple of minutes of tests at the moment before we uh, properly get started. Uh, yeah, hopefully everyone's okay. It's a little bit weird because uh, one of the cameras mirrored and the other one's not. So, uh, and if it looks like I'm not staring directly at you, it's because I'm not, because I've got webcams attached to my setup over here, which uh, makes it a little bit unusual. Um, okay, uh, I've got um, my assistant, Cyan, watching from somewhere. And Cyan, you can confirm to me that everything looks and sounds okay. That would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, um, okay. Okay, guys, uh, what time are we? We've got three minutes. Three minutes. I'm just going to get ready, okay? Get your questions ready. Today we're making Malaysian chicken curry. And um, I've got my son, Noah, with me. I've got, uh, for those that don't know me, I've got a Down syndrome toddler. His name is Noah. And he's here with me tonight. And he's a little bit ill, just like I am. So if he, if he grizzles a little bit, I'm just going to have to... Uh, duck off screen a little bit to attend to him. He's just watching his favorite show in his room at the moment. So we'll see how we go. Okay. Um, let me see. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, just let me quickly send a message off to Cyan and see what she says. And again, welcome to everyone. My name is Jackie M. For those who don't know me on the through the Facebook page, um, and I am going to be doing a Malaysian curry tonight, and hopefully everything runs fine. We all know it live broadcasts; anything can go wrong, but, you know, at any time. So, uh, okay. Again, yeah. sounds about good. Okay, great, great. Now, I've got two minutes. It's a bit unfair for me to start early. So I'll get Cyan to start sharing the URL to all my social media pages and all that. And if you're watching, uh, those who watched me last week, uh, thanks for coming back. And those who are new to this, my name is Jackie M. And, and out comes Noah and he's counting his follower out. So <laughs> I hope it's not too disruptive. You, gotta, you guys got to appreciate, uh, uh, like, a lot of the... Uh, People, uh, I juggle a whole lot of stuff. So I've got my, uh, I've, uh, I've got a, a toddler around me, and he's, uh, his name is Noah, and he's got Down syndrome, and he's uh, not really well today. So hopefully everything holds together. Like I said, uh, my claim to fame is Malaysian food specifically, and more generally Southeast Asian food, and even more specifically um, street food, and also. Um, I used to run a restaurant and I'm fairly active on social media and I've been playing around with a thermal cook. For those who've never seen one, this is what it looks like. I'm just going to move this around a little bit. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> okay, this is uh, the thermal cook and it's what they call a kitchen machine. A few of these out in the marketplace nowadays. And I actually started out using a thermal mix. I used to be a thermal mix consultant for the briefest time, actually. Um, and then I came across a thermal cook and I haven't looked at it since. Okay. And Noah, are you going to say hello to everyone? Noah, say hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go back and watch the show. Here you go. And my apologies for my voice, everyone. Like I said, I'm just, um, I'm just, um, at this stage of my call where it is just really, really cracking at the moment. Okay, now, Malaysian chicken curry, guys, um, is what we're doing today, 7 a.m. start. Hi, everyone. My name is Jackie M, and I am uh, doing a Southeast Asian cooking masterclass series, and today we're doing a Malaysian chicken curry, very, very simple dish to prepare, and I'm going to show you how I prepare it with a thermo cook and uh, an optimum thermo cook, and I've got it over here. 
And I've just got some ingredients laid out. If you sign up to be notified about this event, you would have gotten a copy of the recipe for today. Speaking of recipes, I'm going to, um, while this is cooking uh, a little bit down the track, I'm going to explain a little bit about how I go about my recipes and that sort of stuff, okay? So don't stress out too much about them at this stage. But um, now, Asian ingredients. I know I, one of the things that people get really flummoxed about is uh, um, Asian ingredients. And I did a quick, um, uh, I, I, I actually shared a picture, I just remember. I shared a picture on social media the other day of like different types of Malaysian curry powder. And like, um, if you know, if you go to a lot of Asian grocery stores that are a little bit more specialized, I guess, um, you should be able to find Malaysian brands of curry powder. And I'm not being, um, I'm not trying to tell you that Malaysian is best or whatever, but generally I think it makes sense if you're cooking a Malaysian recipe to look for Malaysian uh, ingredients, right? And um, But failing that, if you can't find it, your favorite uh, type of curry powder is completely fine. But generally Malaysian curry powders, uh, you would find um, three uh, general types of curry powder. Usually you'll find a meat curry powder, a fish curry powder, and usually a rinse down on curry powder, okay? And I'll mention in my post as well that don't stress out too much about um, their descriptions. They're really kind of like uh, more uh, essentially uh, different ratios and different combinations of curry spices. So essentially they all contain the same thing but uh, slight variations in the, the, the balance. Um, red and curry powder tends to be a little bit stronger in flavour. Um, the fish curry powder tends to have more turmeric and a couple of those kinds of ingredients that give your uh, fish or seafood curry a, a nice low hue to it. Um, but as I mentioned as well, um, when I used to run my restaurant, I actually used to use a fish curry powder for my lamb curry, okay? Just because it says fish curry powder doesn't mean you're only limited to using it for fish curry. Um, that's what I'm trying to get across. So today we're doing a Malaysian chicken curry and I am in fact using a, a meat curry powder. I'm going to show you the one that I'm using today. Here you go, over here. I've been told to clean up my setup a little bit. <laughs> so I'm trying to be very organized, but that's what usually. Oh, I roll. Okay. In Malay, it actually says sort uh, curry daging. It means meat curry powder. Okay. And in English, it says meat curry powder. This is just one of the brands. There are lots and lots of different brands out there. It says it's from Malaysia. You're, you're in Malaysia. You're pretty safe hands because um, usually the really the only the best uh, regarded brands actually make it to our shores over here. It's so hard trying to bring products into a country. Okay, so you have to have a pretty good product to be able to uh, uh, successfully uh, compete for shelf space here in Australia. Now, um, so that's what I'm using. And generally with uh, curry powders, I, it depends on the kind of meat you're cooking. If you're cooking a red meat curry, you can afford to use more curry powder. If you're cooking a chicken curry like I am here today, I would generally recommend about two tablespoons, two heap tablespoons of curry powder um, per kilo of meat. Um, and it varies to individual taste, right? Um, if you know anything about Malaysia at all, Malaysia is a multicultural country, and when you start digging into the nuances of how the different cultures, the different ethnic uh, background, um, you know, different ethnicities tackle their recipes, you're going to find that uh, perhaps the Chinese would probably be a little bit more light-handed in their, their seasoning, and similarly, they probably would have a lighter kind of like curry, um, whereas the Indians tend to like their very, very strong spices sort of thing, so you might find that an Indian curry Chicken curry might be a lot stronger in flavor than a Chinese uh, cooked one, right? So that's just something that you keep in mind. The Malays probably strike the balance, right? I think as far as curries are concerned. Um, but generally, I would use about two, uh, two tablespoons of curry powder to a kilo of meat. I'm going to be a little bit uh, radical here today. Now, one of my reasons for doing a chicken curry with the thermal cook today is partly because um, in relation to a thermal mix, like I say, they, they operate basically the same way. I saw a critic um, comment uh, in a post just a couple of weeks ago about how they never got the whole kitchen machine thing because, you know, the diet doesn't consist of smoothies and dips, right? Um, but the fact is um, these kitchen machines do actually do a lot more than that, which is why I'm a curry and I'm not just doing a chicken curry I'm actually doing a chicken curry on the bone these are like what they call lovely legs which are chicken legs with the skin removed and the you know the bottom cut off okay so I've got probably about a kilo of lovely legs in here um 
no, because I'm using a chicken on the burn, it will take a little bit longer to cook, but it doesn't matter. Um, and so this is my jug, and I'm just using a normal, um, you know, the plate over here. And the ingredients I'm going to use are onion. So I've just got one large onion that's been uh, cut up. Actually, you know what? Uh, I did the same last week. You should always start with processing the tougher ingredients, okay? So I've got some lemongrass over here. This fresh lemongrass I picked up from my Asian grocery store. You can usually find them for about a dollar fifty uh, for uh, you know two sticks or something like that. If lucky, you know, depends on where you buy it. Uh, this has just been cut into um, about three inch things over here. I've just got a knob of ginger. I'm going to throw in. Okay, and I'm just going to process this first before I move on to the other ingredients. So just lock it in place and. So I've just done that for about five seconds. And that's not quite enough there for me to be able to puree it properly. I can add the other ingredients there. So I'm just going to throw in the garlic and the onion, right? And I'm going to process it a bit longer. Okay, then about 10 seconds, see how it looks. Okay, that looks fine to me. I might just want to process it a little bit longer because my the lemon grass I picked up was actually quite dry. Well, certainly by the time I use it, it's been sitting around in my kitchen for a few days so it's dried up a little bit so I might just process it a little bit longer but I'll show you what it looks like at this stage all right okay you can see that all right I'm just going to throw in the curry powder. Usually I would suggest just mixing it up into a paste with a little bit of water, but there's quite a lot of um, the ginger, the onions are actually sticking quite a bit now. But there's quite a lot of moisture in the onion now that it's been processed. I'm just going to mix it up here and show you what it looks like. And then if needs be, I'll just add a little bit more water just to turn it into a paste consistency, right? Okay, it's not looking too bad. I'll just hold it up here. Okay. So this is it here. I'm mean, inclined to actually just process it a little bit longer just to get the last of the lemon grass. The lemon grass usually processes really well but I because I didn't stick it a lot. And also because I was using the, 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 the top end of it a little bit because I was being cheeky to try to get the most out of it. Um, let's go. Okay. Okay, so there you go. I'm just going to add a bit of oil to this now. And you want a fair bit of oil for it to be able to do its thing properly. You can always skim it off at the end. But I know a lot of um, people for health, health reasons generally try and avoid using too much oil. If you're cooking, a, this is what uh, what we call in Malay rumpa, okay? Um, so this is like the curry spices. That are going to form the basis of the curry that we're using, right? And now I put the oil in. I'm going to leave the lid off and I'm going to use the auto function here. It's got like a lot of uh, preset settings here. I'm going to use the auto function and use the saute setting. 
is going to cook for about five minutes and I'm just going to come forward and talk to you. Just give me two seconds if you don't mind. Okay, right. So now, um, as far as uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is just quickly using curry powders, right? Um, I know that um, you, you get a lot of uh, Australian chefs post uh, share their recipes on, um, you know, big uh, news sites like Sydney Morning Herald and all that sort of stuff. I remember probably a year or two ago, uh, famous Australian chef, one of your um, go-to celebrity chefs posted a recipe for beef Brenda. Um, and, you know, it had ingredients, things like uh, galanga, lemongrass, turmeric, um, you know, a, a lot of different ingredients, all separate, all individually roasted and then added into the dish to make a beef brenda. And Westerners look at it and think, oh, wow, this is complicated. And we Malaysians look at it to a person, I promise you, my Malaysian friends are looking at it and thinking, why did he just use the rundown curry powder, okay? Because that's how we cook in Malaysia. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I hate to admit it, but like even growing up, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up uh, in Malaysia in the uh, 70s and the 80s. Um, even back in those days, we used to use curry powder, okay? So it's not, um, you may think it's cheating, you may think it's a shortcut, but that's how we've done it for 30 plus years um, back in the home country. You can, if you want, you know, individually roast all these different uh, spices and, and, and pound them and all that and mix it up into a, a beef and down, but that's, you know, your average Canadian household would just pick up the spice, you know, the prepackaged spices or they'll get their local spice uh, Indian bag to pack it for them and they take it home and they just dump it into the sauce pot and just cook it up, okay? So that's one thing about um, Southeast Asian cooking, about Malaysian cooking, that um, I think uh, a lot of Westerners, if they're, being, if they're being introduced into it late in life, they overcompensate and try to overcomplicate a lot of things. When I went to Thailand, same thing, you know, um, we were doing some, uh, you know, some Thai dish and this is at a high-end hotel and I said, oh, the, 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 you know, and he says, oh, the ingredients, this, 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 and red curry paste. I said, do you make your own red curry paste? No, nobody makes their own red curry paste. They all buy it, okay? So don't worry too much about having to buy all these things pre-made. Um, so this is cooking away. The other thing I wanted to bring up, right, uh, the picture, if you saw that the picture of the uh, Malaysian chicken curry that we had, it actually had what's called um, that particular uh, batch I made actually had curry leaves in it. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to show you what curry leaves look like. Okay, there you go. So this has been in the freezer, in my freezer, so it looks a little bit dark and limp, but um, usually it's a much lighter color. And you can usually find curry leaves at Indian grocery stores, okay? You can order it. Well, certainly in my experience, it do. your experience may be different in different parts of the world. But in my experience, in my part of Sydney, um, this ingredient is a little bit harder to come by at uh, grocery stores run by Asia, um, Southeast Asians, okay? Um, you'll have better luck finding it at Indian grocery stores. So look for a grocery store run by an Indian person and they'll have the curry leaves usually in the refrigerator, okay? Um, my Southeast Asian grocer, who's Vietnamese, he buys it for me, but I have to pre-order it a day beforehand or two days beforehand and they'll buy it from uh, the Paddy's markets, okay? Um, another thing I want to show you, I get asked this a lot. These are pandan leaves and this is what they look like. And again, this is very limp because it's been sitting in my freezer, okay? They grow virtually like weeds sometimes on the side of the road in Malaysia. And when people ask me what pandan leaves are, I describe them as a Asian vanilla. And I, 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 I could swear I'm the first person who ever described it. Pandan leaves as Asian vanilla, right? And then suddenly everyone nowadays goes, like, oh, it's Asian vanilla sort of thing. But it's actually, it, 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 it's kind of like a flavoring herb. It's got a nice subtle um, fragrance to it. And you can use it in both sweet and savory dishes. A lot of the time, the way we use it in a savory dish, and you can even use it in a curry, and I might just throw it into sort of heck of it, is uh, you would kind of 
tie it up like this in a knot. Oops. And then um, it's a bit limp, so it doesn't matter. Usually it's, it's a bit more crunchy when it's fresh. And then you might just bruise it a little just to bring out the flavor. And also the way you can use this as well is in your rice. If you're cooking some rice, you know, you throw a knot of this in your rice and it's it permeates the rice with a nice subtle flavor. And also if you see any Asian uh, sweets and delicacies like those steam cakes um, that look green in color, that's what gives it the green color. Pandan leaves, okay. In Thai, uh, it's called pandanus, okay. But over here uh, in, in Malaysia, we call it pandan. And this is what it looks like. Let's see how this is going. This is probably good, okay. I'm just going to cook it a little bit longer. It's got a nice flavor. And I'm going to add more oil to it. Because what you want to do is cook it so that it um, the oil starts to separate, okay. Let's just give it another five minutes or so. Okay. Okay, let's see how we go. The other thing I want to show you, uh, chicken lovely legs, like I said, what you can do is just kind of like snip at it. Then I might, um, I might just do that. And that will help it to cook a little bit faster. And usually, if you're, you know, if you grew up in Southeast Asia, you'll know that curry always tastes better the day after. So usually, you know, um, first night is okay, and the day after, all the flavors get absorbed, and it tastes a lot nicer. And when I was a, uh, when I was about 15 years old, I ran away from her, and I moved in with a Malay family, and the food. <laughs> And the food used to be cooked uh, by the grandmother in the house. And she made this beautiful curry. I, I think it was like beef rendang or something like that. And it just sits on the table in one of those covered, um, you know, food covering things. And nothing goes in the refrigerator. And it tastes beautiful, you know. It's just out there for two, three days. And this is in Malaysia, you know, in, in hot, humid weather. So uh, it really depends on how you prepare your curries. They can actually be quite resilient. Uh, probably chicken not so much and certainly the drier curries will last longer which is why the surrounding I made last week um, can actually last out of the fridge for months and months right and I was going to mention if you actually downloaded the surrounding recipe and um, Cyan is going to post links to where you can download all these recipes if you haven't got them already but uh, if you downloaded the recipes now I mentioned last week and I got to reiterate it um, the fact is that a lot of my recipes, the ingredients that I write down, but I and one of the, one of the things I hate the most doing is to kind of like write recipes, okay? Because I do a lot of my cooking by instinct. It's like, okay, that seems about right. Sort of thing. So when I have to write recipes, I usually do it um, from memory. I would be thinking, okay, um, you know, two kilos of chicken, okay, that you know, I guess about this much salt would be okay, and that sort of stuff. But um, it, it's not an exact science. So. When I was doing this rinding here the last week and I followed my own recipe, I found after the fact that it was actually a little bit over, overly salty. So uh, if, you're, if you're planning to make it and you haven't already and you haven't caught me out yet, just cut down the salt by uh, the, the chicken stock granules by, oh gosh, cut it down to, I think from memory that recipe said two tablespoons of chicken salt granules. Um, you probably just need half a tablespoon and then, you know, see how you go with that. But... Uh, like I said, you know, once you get the hang of it with Asian cooking, you start cooking by instinct as well. You wouldn't need to measure anything, okay? And that's what you want to achieve because you'll find a lot of, like, um, some of the best recipe blogs, and unfortunately, I guess a lot of people don't read Malay, but I do, um, but some of the best Malay recipe blogs, they're written by housewives back in Malaysia, and they, uh, you know, there's no uh, amounts, no quantities in them, okay, they'll just say, oh, um, enough salt to taste, enough sugar to taste, enough tamarind to taste, everything is to taste, or, you know, everything is aga aga, you know, everything is, there's that phrase, you know, which means, uh, 
you know, as much as you need or just enough, right? Okay. So uh, that's the kind of approach you're going to have to bring to your cooking at some point once you, once you get the hang of it. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, okay, so that's out of the way. Now, um, if anyone has any questions, don't forget to post it in the comments because Cyan is monitoring the comments and she'll somehow pass one to me. Hopefully I can see some of them over here. I've just got my Lenovo here and uh, see how we go as well. And again, if you're just joining us, um, just uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, this is uh, my second episode and I'm doing Malaysian chicken curry. I'm just going to stop this now. Now, usually when you're, when you're, when you're frying your rumpa, you want to bring out the, uh, you know, the, the, the oils a little bit, okay? So this is nearly there. No. But I'm going to short soak it this and add the chicken in now. And I've got to apologize for my condition. Like I said, I'm just recovering from a cold. I'm actually probably at the, at the height of my cold, to be honest. So I'm putting the whole chicken in. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm trying to think that um, I've mentioned this before. Um, the with the thermal cook, the blades, um, you know, do spin only one direction. Whereas with the thermal mix, they can reverse spin. Okay, and the reverse spin actually means that you're not making contact with your meat um, with the blunt edge of the blade. Um, whereas with the thermal cook, it comes with two different blades. This is the, the, the kind of like the stirring blade. So I might actually switch it out to the the, the chuck of the stirring blade just to make sure that we can uh, you know, causing any blockage here. Okay, let's see how we go with this. I've never actually used the stirring blade for this chicken. I, I mentioned actually, I only, it only occurred to me fairly recently that um, that second blade was actually just stirring. I, I, I didn't see any example of her making. But let's just use it here. I've always, you know, used the normal blade for my chicken curry. Okay, so let's do that. And I'm going to add some water to this. And let's, um, what do we want? I'm just going to set on a manual setting. I'm going to try to degrees. And I'm going to set it for some 14 minutes at the moment, right? And I'm just going to add other things to it as well. If you if you if you are lazy, you can actually add everything in right now. And the seasoning ingredients that go into this are a little bit of sugar. Um, a lot of people don't realize, but with Malaysian curries, I think the a lot of Indian curries in India, like from India. I, I know because I I used to own my own restaurant and I had staff from all over the world work with me. Um, to the Indians. To see me put a bit of sugar in my curry, that really is so now. Okay. Um, but the Malaysian curry, you know, put a little bit of sugar in it just to come out and have a flavor. But the Thais have put a lot of sugar in the curries. Okay. So those are kind of like little uh, nuances of our different cuisine. So something that you can, and certainly with the Nepalese, or the Nepalese, I see you put sugar in the curries. I hope you know what you're doing. You're killing it. <laughs> okay. But we do put a little bit of sugar in it. Um, and as I said, I talked about chicken stock granules, or chicken powder last week. Um, it's a little bit controversial. You don't have to use this. It's like using chicken stock cubes in your, in, in, in your cooking, right? Um, this particular brand, uh, it's but it also contains MSG. It also contains MSG. Okay, so you don't have to use the other brands that don't contain MSG. It's entirely up to you. Or you can leave it out altogether, okay? Well, I didn't mention last week as well. That, uh, when I go to Malaysia, you know, the, 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 you know, when I'm with chefs who've been around for 20, 30 years, cooking for a living, they're set up, they've got a big bar, and they're set up in terms of their seasoning on the side, always have to live with all the other stuff, like, you know, if a, if a Western chef always has salt and pepper and olive oil and whatever in their, in their repertoire in terms of seasoning of, uh, of the food, the Asians have this 
the lid on it um, and, and bring it to a boil at the highest heat and then shut it down to the smallest setting and let it cool and then at the end just like stick the lid open a little bit when the uh, you know and then let it cook for the five minutes and then just leave it alone and then let it just basically let the steam kind of like keep rise and then ten minutes after that be done. It'll take probably uh, about twenty minutes or um I remember I, I don't watch any reality features but Apparently, there was an episode of MasterChef where there was uh, one of the contestants or uh, someone from the lady, and apparently, every every three minutes she was going over to the rice to open up the lid to check and see where the hour was going. And all the Malaysians were watching her and supporting her from their television screens and were just screaming at her, screaming at her, oh, just leave the goddamn rice alone because you know, when you're cooking rice, if you're Asian. You don't open the lid, you just leave the lid alone because you need the, the steam to be trapped in the pot for the rice to the rice and the oven take. And that's the other thing as well. Um, is, you know, people confuse no me, no one, sorry, no one. I can just see it from the corner of my eyes, I can see it in the top of the very corner of my big balls. Um, yeah, so, um, we're talking rice, um, people, people always talk about al dente, al dente, you know, when, they, when, they, when you're talking about Asian rice, it should not be al dente, it should be cooked all the way through, through it, should be soft and fluffy, it's al dente, and it's yeah, it's cooked through rice. Okay, so, um, I should throw these in, probably I should have frozen them beforehand. Okay, so I've got the pandan leaves and I've got the curry leaves. So I'm going to add a nice dimension to the curry and we'll see how it goes. It's not in the recipe because I generally assume that um, the ingredients are a little bit, maybe, maybe a little bit solid for some people. Okay, uh, in terms of trying to find it, I don't need to do it. So, um, when you're cooking curries, really the, 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 the two core ingredients you want to have are the onion and the garlic. Everything else, the ginger, the lemon glass, they're nice to have. But you know you don't have to have them. I've got plenty of curry where all I use was onion and garlic as the base of wet ingredients. Okay, that was the uh, curry powder, and the rest of it just kind of like it's just you know uh, nice to have. So let's see how it goes. And I mentioned on social media today. Uh, after this, uh, once I once I'm done with this, I'm going to be heading out because I'm catching up with one of my friends, and people are asking me. Who's this? I've got to mention that he's uh, in X Files. Anyone here watches X Files? Let me know. But uh, yeah, he is in the X Files, and his name is uh, Dean Hagler. And he is, uh, if you're one of those people who watched the X Files from years and years ago now, you'll remember there's these three characters in the Ones from London, right? And they're kind of like conspiracy theorists who help Mulder discover a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of conspiracies and they do a lot of research and that's what stuff from them. And Dean Haglund is the guy, one of the three guys, is the one with the long hair. No, we are, uh, uh, no, we please stop. No, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, he's the guy with the long hair and he now lives in Sydney with his wife. And it's, I'm going to be meeting up with him because he's got some projects that I'm working on as well. Because one of my other things apart from the whole food thing is that I'm a co founder of a TV startup based in Indonesia. So I'm just checking out some of his work. So I'm going to get in a final sorry, I have a few of you that just have to see all the people. I'll just go with this for another couple of minutes. So if you've got any questions, uh, let me know. No, we just take a listen. No, we stop. But something else is at least uh, at least not sick. It was really sickly that is that I could so whiny and crying and that kind of stuff. So at least I'm trying to entertain myself by making face. No, I'm the one who can see this. Okay, let's see how this is going. <coughs> now, generally with uh the chicken legs, I will cook it for about 15 minutes. So this is going to be about right. Um, if you think that it's not quite done, just you know, set it for another couple of minutes and see how it goes. Right. I smell the flavors coming through quite strongly. It's 
all that. So it's only your one of the high quality units that you can um, pay a special price for your um, lower court units inside the client. Um, but otherwise, I will see you next week and answer your money questions. And most importantly, if you attend this digital hand, please post a picture on social media and use the hashtag Jackie M Live. It's Jackie M from Malaysia. Live L I T E, okay, and I'll convince uh, really the people who are helping to promote this event uh, to show us some special incentives for you guys to do as well. So I've seen some pictures of us renting and that sort of stuff over the course of the last week. It's very exciting, uh, but I expect to see more over the course of the next few days. So give it a shot, guys, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. And